Hello everyone and welcome back to the Flask tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be talking about two basic HTTP methods which are GET and POST. Now these are just ways of sending information to our server or to our client, so whoever's using the website. I'm going to talk about the differences between both of them and then go through a basic example of how we can send, for example, some password data or some name data from a form to the back end of our website so it can be processed and we can do something with that. In future videos, we'll get into some more advanced things. We'll talk about databases, logging in, sessions, all of that, and we'll just go with it this until we kind of run out of things to do. So before I get too far into this, we need to explain what get and what post are, which are the two HTTP TTP methods I'm gonna to explain today. Now you've probably heard of both of these before. Get is the most common way of, well, getting or sending information to a website or, you know, to a client, depending on whatever way this information is going. Post is a way of doing this securely. So get essentially is an insecure way of getting information. It's most commonly used. And a basic example of that is, let's bring up the website here, when we type something in the URL bar or in the address bar. So you can see here, I've connected to my website. I have it running here. It just has the home page on it. And if I refresh this, we see in the console, we have a command that pops up saying get. Now, what does this mean? Well, essentially, whenever we type something here that's not secure, which means you know anyone can see it, um, it's not secure information, it will send to the server here and then they will return to us the actual web page using a get method. Now, if we were to use post, what we would actually do is send secure information that's encrypted that cannot be you know, seen from either ends and is not stored on the actual web server. So that is kind of the difference between get and post. Now, I know this might be a little bit confusing right now. I'm probably not explaining it in the best way, but as we go through the video, you guys will understand kind of the main differences between that. But the basic way to think of it is whenever you're using a get command, it's something that's not secure, that you don't care if someone sees it. It's typically just typed in through the address bar or it's just a link, you redirect to it. And then with post, that's something that's secure. It's usually form data and it's something that we're not gonna be saving on the actual web server itself unless we're gonna be sending that to a database. All right, so let's now go through a basic example. I just wanna set up a few different pages here for this example first, and then we'll get into actually sending the information. So what I wanna do is a really basic script where essentially we have a little dialog box. Um, someone can you know, type in hello, they can hit a button. It's gonna send that information to the server using a post request, which we'll talk about in a second, or post method. And then we're gonna display that information on another page. So what I wanna do is set up a page here for logging in, or just actually we'll just say, uh, yeah, we'll just call it login for now, although it's not really a login. Um, we'll give this a decorator, so at app.root, and then we're just gonna put slash login. Now in this decorator, I'm actually gonna add another aspect that we haven't seen yet, which is the methods we can use on this login page. So by default, whenever you connect or you know go to one of these pages, you're gonna go with a get request, which means that you know we're just gonna get that information, it's not gonna be secure, and that's fine. But we can actually have different methods. So if I wanted to find the different methods that are gonna be allowed from these pages, I can say methods equals make a list and then put post and get because for this specific function or this specific page we're going to need to use those now inside of here um for right now actually we'll just return render template and then we won't put anything in here yet because we haven't created a template and let's create one more page we'll say define user it's actually going to take the variable usr and then inside here we'll just say return render template and then again in here we'll put something else after so let's do at app.root Let's make this dynamic so that we can actually just pass through the user right into here. So we'll say slash, and in this case, user like that. And we should be, actually this is gonna have to say USR, my apologies. And actually instead of returning render template, I'm actually just gonna return some basic HTML because I just want to make this easy. So let's just say, you know, h1. Um, we'll do this in F string. So we'll say USR, we'll put an F here. And then we'll do a slash h1 to close that there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go and build out this login page, just a basic HTML form. So inside of my templates, what I'm gonna do is create a new file. Let's just call this login.html. And then inside here, we'll start creating the form. So we're gonna first start by extending that base.html. So we'll say extends. And then here, if I could spell this correctly, base.html. Then we'll do these tags for our title. So we'll say uh, block title. And then we'll end our block here. And then inside here, we'll just put login page like that. Okay, so let's do some more blocks for the content. We'll just do a quick form here, nothing too crazy. Let's say block content. 
percent percent and block and now we'll start building out our form so essentially forms are a way that we can actually send information to the website and we're usually going to send information through forms so whenever we know we're going to be you know getting some information from a form we need to put our form tags in html i'm sure most of you guys know that but i'm just going to specify that here and we need to say the action that this form is going to take now the action essentially is just a url that we want to redirect to once this form is submitted. So in this case, I'm actually just going to put the pound sign, which means we're going to go back to the same page and we're just going to do, you know, whatever the same page we we're at, you know, slash pound. This is kind of a basic way of just saying, you know, we're going to stay on the same page. Now, after action, we're also going to put method. And in this case, our method is actually going to be post because we're going to be posting information, not getting information. Usually, if you put get in here, that means you're actually going to fill this form with information that you get from the server. Okay, so now we're just going to do some basic things. So I'm just going to say P, I'm going to say name in here. We'll just ask the user for their name. We'll do another P tag. Oops, I don't want to do form there. I want to do slash P and that P tag. And then in here, we're actually going to put an input. We'll say type equals, if I could end this here, type equals text and then name equals, and make sure you remember this. Let's just call this NM just for name. And then we'll do another input. So we'll actually copy this, except this time we're going to make this a submit button. I'm just going to say input type equals submit. And instead of name, we're going to say value equals. In this case, we'll just put, what should we do? Submit as the value there. Okay. So now we've built out this form. This is going to be a page that we render. I don't think I made any mistakes, but knowing me, I probably did. <laughs> so in here, for rendering this template now, what we're going to do is simply just put in login.html and we don't need to pass that any information. All right, so we've created the form and we've created and rendered this template now. So now what we need to do is figure out how we're actually going to get this information and handle it from this side. So let's start by actually, um, this should hopefully update here. So let's actually go and look at the website and go to slash login and just see what we get. So when we go to slash login, we can see this is kind of what we're getting now. We have, you know, a basic little box where we can type some things in and we have a submit button. And notice that when I hit that, we're posting and you can see that it has this little hashtag here. And it, notice that it's different because it's saying post. Whereas if I were to refresh this, then we're going to get a get request rather than post. Okay, so awesome. That is all we have for now. So now what I need to do is actually say, how can we determine in this login function, whether we called the get request or whether we called the post request? What we need to do is start by importing request. So we're just going to import request up here with render template. And now I'm going to show you how we can check whether we reach this page with a get request or a post request. It's pretty basic. All we're going to do is just say if request dot method equals equals and make sure this is in all capitals post then we're going to do something specific otherwise we'll do something else so in this case what i'm going to do is move this render down here so if we have the get request what we're going to do is render the login template because that means you know we didn't click the submit button we're just going to the slash login page so let's show it here but if we have post, what I want to do is actually get the information that was from that little name box and then use that and send us to the user page where we can display the user's name. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So all we need to do is actually set up a variable that's going to store our user's name. And we need to say user equals request dot form. And then what we're going to do in here is put the dictionary key that we want to access for the name corresponding with whatever input we had here. So in this case, we had name equals NM. So what we're going to do is put NM as a dictionary key here. And what that's going to do is actually give us the data that was typed into this input box. So we could go as far as to, you know, make sure that this wasn't blank before we go to the next page. What I'm actually going to do is just use this information to redirect us to the user page. I'll show us that, show you that example, and then we'll uh, talk about this a bit more. So I'm going to say return. And in this case, we're going to say redirect URL for, we're going to say user, and then we're going to say USR equals in this case, user. So now what we should be doing is essentially if we click that submit button, it should send us over to this user page and then it should just tell us, you know, whatever that user is that we saw. So let's try this and see if it works. Let's make sure that this refreshed. I think it did. So let's actually just go to slash login, make sure the gets working. So get slash login working fine. Let's type Tim and hit submit. And there we go. We can see that we get redirected to a page that says our name. Now note that we see post and then we see get, and that is kind of the basic way that that works. And let's just go back to slash login. Uh, what's happening here. 
there we go and then if i go to you know hello and we do that we could see that hello is showing up on the screen so that is the way that we can actually get information from a form and obviously if you had more than one you know input type here then you can get all of those information by just using the name as a dictionary key on request.form so that is kind of the basics behind this Notice that you know request.form actually comes in as a dictionary, which means that you can access each object using the key. So whenever, like I said already, you have names in here, you have multiple things, make sure they're unique, and then you can actually access all of them by just doing request.form. Make sure, however, before you do this, that the method was post and not get, otherwise you may run into an issue. So that has been HTTP methods, how to get some information from a form. I know this was a basic example. We didn't go through too much, but in the next video, we'll go in a more advanced example and we'll use the post and the gets and actually go through a login example. And then we'll get into sessions and some more advanced stuff. As always, if there's anything you guys would like me to cover in this series, leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in another video.